got the great, great pleasure now to introduce Anna Blessman and Peter Saville. Uh, they both met in a gallery in Berlin in 2001 and soon after started to collaborate on works which have been shown in many places, at hotels in London, um, in institutions, in museums, in galleries. Uh, actually, in 2010, they uh, presented Swing Project One at the Frac Champagne Ardenne in Reims, also shows at the Crack in Alsace, at the Micro Museum at Paul Stolpo, um, and this collaboration continues with many new projects. They both live and work together in London. Peter participated in 2006 in the interview marathon in a conversation with Rem Kohlhaas, and he's exhibiting many works right now in the postmodernism exhibition at the V&A just next door. I've had many conversations with Peter and Anna preparing this marathon, for which I wanted to thank them. And we always came back to one point, which is Capability Brown. It was the Capability Brown conversation. Today, Peter and Anna will be presenting TV Blumen. A very, very warm welcome to Anna Blessman and Peter Saville. Yes, it works. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Um, good evening. Um, a few years ago, I found a great um, shipping carton outside of florists, and it had pre-cooled flowers written on the side of it. <clears throat> I think I know what that means now. Um, I've never spoken to a room full of people in blankets, but I'll try. Um, and in order to keep um, Hans Ulrich's attention, um, we have not one but two two unfinished or unrealized projects to, to mention this evening. Uh, where does it start? Okay, um, well, Hans Ulrich also mentioned the postmodernism show where this is, um, I think my horticultural association probably publicly started with this in 1983. Um, it's the cover of Power Corruption and Lies. And it's um, a little bit of, of 19th century romanticism. Um, in the sort of fin de siècle of the previous century, and I, I transported it in a way to the fin de siècle of, of postmodernism of the 20th century. Um, <clears throat> it includes language, but language converted into, into a coat of colors down the side. Um, and a few years later, um, I, in a way, in a way converted flowers themselves in, into code. I, I was wandering home through um, Holland Park one afternoon and all the rhododendron bushes in Holland Park were in bloom and I, I thought it looked wonderful. So I, I, asked, I asked someone to go back with a Pantone book and, and match Pantones to, to flowers and kind of created a, a color code out of the flowers themselves. Um, and Around about that time, in, in the sort of mid to late 80s, um, Neo Geo was sort of happening in the, in the art scene, particularly in New York, and I was quite interested in that. But it, it had a certain, um, obviously, retrospective quality to it, and at this time, having sort of referenced history a lot myself, I felt a little bit inclined to, to try to articulate something new and... At that time, my closest friend was a photographer called Trevor Key. And I said to Trevor one day, uh, I want to make a picture of a flower, but a, a flower for the lobby of IBM in the year 2000. So he said, non-Irving pen flower. Then I said, no, not, not an Irving pen flower. Uh, and, and from that came the beginning of a series of images. This is a peony that we photographed one week in the studio, and then following it each day as it opened up. And I was interested in the, in, the, in the geometry, the internal geometry of the flower itself. And um, Trevor found a way to record that, and then a method by which we then introduced color selectively to, to different images. And this sort of process, whilst I was, I was thinking about this, I, I was imagining them, arranging them in, in patterns as well when they finally kind of began to evolve and develop. And and at the same time, I got interested in this, which was in a way the, the hybridity of language itself 
when associated with the, the naming of flowers. Um, the Mendel tulip, orange wonder. There was a certain kind of pattern to, to the language that's, that's developed around the naming of flowers, which I found very interesting. Obviously, a Mendel tulip is a type of tulip, and then orange wonder is some, obviously, very bright version that someone's, someone's managed to breed. And this kind of concluded at that point. Um, sadly, Trevor died in the mid-90s, and this, this project of kind of natural geometric never really developed beyond that point. There you go. And about 10 years ago, when I started visiting Peter in London, he wasn't really living anywhere. He was staying at a friend's house in Shepherd's Bush, and I couldn't really work there, so I only brought my camera. And um, one evening, I think Peter was in his, in his studio in, in East London, and I didn't know what to do with myself and just sort of stared at the white noise of the TV screen and the silhouette of, of the flower in front of it, which was sitting on the, on the coffee table. And I got interested in the, the weird um, light which the TV was doing to the, to the outline of the flower and how it distorted the flower and how the light penetrated the the petals and um, yeah and previous previously my work has been very much um, around investigating the the screen as a pattern as um, the way it, it fractures the image it shows and how the the closer you get to it the, the less you see And at the same time, I got interested in the idea of collecting artificial specimens, and and I saw a lot of them in in the shop in the shop windows on on Uxbridge Road. And yeah, that's how TV Blumen was born. Yeah, I I um, saw these pictures that that Anna was doing with the the flowers and the, the, the television screens and the kind of integration of the two. And, and we kind of talked about it and I think it encouraged you to, to do more and to, to press on with it. And, and from that came a series of images that ended up being called TV Bloomin'. Um, and this one, um, what's it called? Oh, Hobby Shop, Ho Hobby Shop Crochet de Paris is the name of this one. And it's, you know, it's from a hobby shop in Berlin, um, a sort of craft shop, and they sold it as a do-it-yourself crochet set. <laughs> so you, did you, you crocheted the flower? I yeah. crocheted the flower, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, in the beginning, the, the backgrounds were very much just default blue or default green. And I really liked about them that they were oddly very much like um, traditional study backgrounds. Yeah, they were a little bit the way you would see a flower uh, recorded in, in a museum specimen guide or in, in a book. And the series of pictures, we, we imagine they might be a book or a portfolio at some point. What's the next one? Okay. Um, this one is called um, Pound Crazy, Polyester, Tender and Trouble Free. And, well, it's from a one, <laughs> it's from a one pound shop in Shepherd's Bush Green. And it's polyester, easy care. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, I was quite fascinated by the, these flowers that Anna was finding. Some were, some were incredibly exotic and others were incredibly banal. Uh, this, is, this is actually one of the more banal ones from Shepherd's Bush Green. And, and this kind of, in a way, the culture, the naming came from looking into them. I mean, sometimes it was, um, sometimes it was based on, on what this flower was supposed to be, and it wasn't always clear what kind of flower it was supposed to be in some cases. And then, and the polyester tender and trouble free just came from kind of looking up information about polyester and its <laughs> softness to the touch and its trouble free nature. It's a kind of washable fake flower. Ah, this is kindergarten cut and fold. And as the title says, it's from a kindergarten, it's a a friend's child made this flower. And I mean, it looks a little bit Audi to Well, me, it's a actually. German child. <laughs> <laughs> a German child and a sort of almost, almost a flower made by Audi. Very kind of cut and fold. Ah, 
this is um um uh, what is it this one it's painted 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 poly bag. Oh, okay yeah. painted painted poly bag artisan is the name of this one and uh, it's it's a carrier bag um and tubing paste paint sprayed by um, my dad, my father. And uh, I mean, again, I, I mean, I, uh, as Anna was working on these, I, I was just sort of look at them and, and, and ask, you know, where it came from. And Manfred, uh, Anna's father, who's an artist, had uh, obviously painted this one. Um, and I, whilst Anna was taking the pictures, I just sort of played with the language to see, see what kind of, uh, uh, of unusual juxtapositions and phrases could come out of, out of the language. This one is, oh, Design Master, yeah, Design Master <laughs> Chinese Feathers is the name of this one. And Design Master is a shop on West 28th Street in New York, which is an area where actually every single shop sells fake flowers. Yeah, we, we, because uh, this, this fake flower thing became a bit of a fixation for a while and Anna quickly ran out of Oxbridge Road shops. <laughs> and, and everywhere we went, we were looking looking for artificial flowers. And, and in New York, we asked, and, and I was amazed that someone told us that, that um, West 28th, between, you know, I don't know, Park and, no, not Park, over near Broadway, West 28th near Broadway, there's an entire block that only sells artificial flowers. I mean, it's like the artificial flower capital of America. <laughs> and, and the design master, I, I think that's probably a label. It's the shop. Oh, it's the shop, yeah. okay, it's the, the, the shop. And it's made out of feathers. <laughs> um, oh, I have to give the titles, don't yeah, I? Um, artificial it. landscapes, r real silk, raspberry ripple. Um, yeah, at this point, I started to look at um, backgrounds and, and just trying to look for other images of nature. And lots of them ended up coming from TV ads and German Heimat films like sort of sentimental 50s movies or with a... Landscape, usually in yeah, landscape. Yeah, landscape. and a stra strange German relation to landscape. And, and th this, I mean, Artificial Landscapes is a quite spectacular shop in, in Kensington. Um, and it sort of represents, in a way, the kind of high point of, art, art of, of artificiality. It's where, it's where the kind of, it's where the making of artificial flowers becomes, in a way, um, sort of trompe l'oeil. And, um, and this is, was a point where the, the kind of the objects in the background and the image um, sort of began to propose a, 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 an altogether alternative reality where, the, where the, the flowers are so realistic that they really are mimicking nature and, and the backgrounds are suggesting a, a place where they exist. And, and suggesting almost a, um, another phase of evolution of nature. Um, you know, from, the, from, from, from primal forest ultimately to a nature that, that, that man himself just begins to, to create. Yeah, and it's so realistic that you only find out by touch if it's true or fake. So it's the perfect deception. Yeah, they're, they're very deceptive. But, um, and this is um, a new concept, old gold hybrid America. And <laughs> the background is fr from, from an ad for an anti, uh, for a, for, it's an ad for a histamine spray. Uh, well, like hay yeah, fever and things I, yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, I, again, one of the shops, I think, on, on West 28th. <gasps> we have to speed up. Okay. Um, this is one of the, the most integrated ones. This is called Ultra, oh no, Leonardo Ultra Blue Daily. Yeah, and then sort of flowers started to morph into their backgrounds where they sort of become a pattern and foreground and background sort of become one. And um, I, the, the other day we were looking at these again and I, I was asking, why did I call it daily? And, and Anna looked in her notes and actually it's a dahlia. Um, but I think it was the fact that it just never died and it was there for you forever that I kind of called it a daily. Um, this is, oh, kindergarten again, but kin kindergarten chants Martin Creed. <laughs> and I made this as a child. I don't remember, but my mom told me. <laughs> but you found it at home? Yeah. yeah. And yes. Um, it obviously, <laughs> it looks like a 
it looks like one of Martin Creed's early early uh, balls of paper pieces. So and uh, by chance, so it, this one is kindergarten chance Martin Creed. Ah, okay, Miss Pirelli. Um, we have to be quick. Miss Pirelli, soft erotic. Um, we took it uh, home from the um, Pirelli calendar shoot Peter was doing with Nick oh, Knight at the I, time. Um, I was out there writing a shoot with Nick, and there was just a room as big as this full of, of flowers, real flowers and, and fake flowers. Um, these ones were very soft to touch, weren't they? <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, okay, this is a, we have to be really quick. This is amazing. This is World of Sex, um, ultra, yeah, World of Sex, Ultra Blush. This is quite phenomenal, this one. This is from a Beate Use sex shop in Berlin. Yeah. And believe it or not, it's six G strings rolled up. Yeah, rolled up as Aram lilies, which are, <laughs> and Arams are normally associated with, with funerals. I, 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 I think somebody turning up on your doorstep with G strings in Aram lilies is quite unsettling, actually. <laughs> yeah, disgusting. Yeah. Um, and the last one was. Foliage paradise. Is it foliage paradise? Foliage yeah. paradise. Dead, deadly nightshade. Yeah. And I think it looks like teardrops. In a macabre kind of setting. I mean, it, it, they're, they're teardrops. The, the closest we could find to these in a, any kind of book of real flowers was um, was deadly nightshade. And uh, I think it's quite um, sinister looking. Perfect kind of background that Anna found for this, this particular um, glass flower. Mm. So um, th that was a, a dozen of them, a kind of conventional number, I think, for flowers. Um, and there's, <clears throat> there's lots. Um, it was as far as that project has, has gone so far. Well, and, and sort of maybe a final thought is that um, the behavioral biologist Irenaeus Ibisfeld um, states that there is something like um, congenital phytophilia, that we, that we are born with a love for flowers. And I was wondering, um, do we still love flowers which are made from paper, glass, plastic, wire mesh? Uh, or, or are they you know, ultimately disappointing because they don't live? I mean, we, we, I, I mean, Anna mentioned this to me, this notion of, of being, you know, kind of having a natural instinct towards flowers, which I think is very, a very interesting idea. And, and that we are kind of attracted, but we, we talked about it this afternoon in preparation for this and, and realized that there was something terribly hollow about um, the fragile forms of nature, which actually are not fragile and, and which don't die. And, and, and no matter how realistic they are, they are kind of disappointing when you when you realise that they're they're not real and they're fake. Thank Will you. Do.